Welcome to Math Phonetics. In this video, we're going to learn about the relative positions of a circle. After learning the parts of a circle from our previous video, let us learn more about the circle's relative positions with straight lines and other circles. Let's take a look at the following illustrations. The first drawing is a weighing scale. A baseball and a baseball bat are shown in our second illustration. And the last one is a globe. Notice that there is a circle in each illustration. The circle in the weighing scale is here. The baseball itself in our second illustration is circular in shape as well as the globe in our third illustration. Notice too that there are straight lines relatively positioned with the circle in each illustration. Let us look for them. The straight line in the first figure is found above the circular part of the scale, while the straight line in the second figure is found on the bat itself where the baseball touches it and the straight line in the third figure passes through the circular globe. If you've noticed, they are relatively positioned with the circles in different ways. Let's analyze each of them. In the first figure, the circle and the straight line are apart from each other or they have a certain distance in between them. This case when a line is outside and does not intersect a circle is called external. The external line does not have a common point with the circumference of a circle. So, there is no point of intersection. This time, let's analyze the baseball and the baseball bat. In this figure, the baseball which is circular in shape is touching the straight edge of the bat at a certain point. This case when a line and a circle meet is called tangent. The straight line and the circle have one common point or point of intersection. And this point of intersection of the tangent line with the circle is called point of tangency. Finally, Let's take a closer look at this globe. In this figure, the axis, which is a straight line, passes through the globe that is circular in shape. This case when a line intersects or meets a circle at two points is called secant. In this situation, the straight line and the circle have two common points or points of intersection. Let's go back to the three illustrations. The scale shows the external position of a line. The baseball and bat show the tangent position. And the globe shows the second position. All these three are the relative positions of a circle and a straight line. Again, a straight line having no point in common with a circle is called external. On the other hand, a straight line which meets or intersects the circle at one point is called tangent. And a straight line which meets or intersects the circle at two points is called secant. This time, let's learn more about relative positions between two circles. Let's take a look at the following illustrations. We have a pair of scissors, a wristwatch, a padlock, an eating set, a lantern, and two rings. Notice that there are circles in each illustration. The pair of scissors has two circular shapes on its handle. The wristwatch has a circular edge and a smaller circle inside it. The body of the padlock is also circular in shape and has a smaller circle in the middle part. The plate in the eating set is circular in shape and touching its edge is a circular saucer. 
The lantern has a circular edge and a smaller circle on it. And the two overlapping rings are also circular in shape. Let us analyze each pair of circles in the first three figures. As you've noticed, all these pairs of circles do not meet or touch each other. So there's no point of intersection. The two circles on the pair of scissors are located outside of each other. While on the watch and padlock, the smaller circles are located inside the bigger ones. Specifically, we use the term external if one circle is completely outside the other circle. Internal if one circle is completely inside the other circle. And if the circles share a common center, we use the term concentric. This time, let us analyze each pair of circles in the next three figures. As you've noticed, all these pairs of circles do meet or touch each other at certain points. Each pair of circles in the eating set and lantern has one point of intersection, while the two overlapping rings have two points of intersection. If the circles have one point of intersection, then we use the term tangent. If the circles intersect at one point externally, then we call this as externally tangent. If the circles intersect at one point internally, then we use internally tangent. And if the circles intersect or meet at two points, then this is what we call as secant. All these six illustrations are the relative positions of two circles. Let's identify each. We have the external, internal, concentric, externally tangent, internally tangent, and secant. Good job, students! Now let's make a recap of what you've learned today. There are three relative positions of a circle and a straight line. First, if a straight line has no point in common with a circle, then it is called external. Second, if a straight line meets or intersects the circle at one point, then it is called tangent. Third, if a straight line meets or intersects the circle at two points, then it is called secant. There are six relative positions of two circles. If one circle is completely outside the other circle, then it is called external. If one circle is completely inside the other circle, then it is called internal. If one circle is inside the other and they share a common center, then it is called concentric. If the circles intersect at one point externally, then we call this as externally tangent. If the circles intersect at one point internally, then we use the term internally tangent. And if the circles intersect or meet at two points, then this is what we call as secant. That's all for relative positions of a circle. Hope you've learned a lot from this video. Kindly share with your friends. Hit the bell icon to keep you updated. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Math Fanatics.